Hello, this is Neil Vanderstelt, author of Global Economic Collapse, The New Dark Ages, available on Amazon.com, Economics Research. I found this article by the New York Times, China's renminbi is approved by IMF as the main world currency by Keith Bradshaw on November 30th, 2015. Let's hear this woman quickly. Uh, the IMF's executive board decided that the renminbi qualified for the SDR basket under existing criteria. The addition and the inclusion of the renminbi in the uh, SDR basket of currencies is a recognition of the significant reforms which have been conducted of the significant uh, opening up of uh, the Chinese economy, of the uh, financial, um, more market-driven principles uh, that are being used by the Chinese authorities going forward. That is clearly symbolic, in a way, of all those uh, reforms, which is why as I associated the renminbi's inclusion with the reforms conducted and to be continued. Okay, so what what they're saying is the the uh, they're sick of the United States being the world currency and all the debt that they're creating, and China has overtaken the United States. That is what's going on. You have a record amount of uh, gold being hoarded by the Chinese, and their uh, gold reserves are substantially higher. This is all done for a reason. This article goes on. It says Hong Kong, the Chinese renminbi was anointed as one of the world's elite currencies on Monday, a milestone decision by the International Monetary Fund that underscores the country's rising financial and economic heft. The move will help pave the way for broader use of the renminbi in trade and finance, securing China's standing as a global economic power. Just four other currencies, the dollar, the euro, the pound, and the yen, have the IMF designation. But the path of the IMF decision, a bumpy process that stretches back years, also introduced new uncertainty into China's economy and financial system. To meet the IMF requirements, China was forced to give up some of its tight control over the currency, culminating in the abrupt devaluation of the renminbi that shook global markets in August. The changes could inject fresh volatility into the country at a time when its economy is already slowing. The IMF designation, an accounting unit known as the Special Drawing Rights, those are SDRs abbreviated, bestows global importance. Many central, central banks follow this benchmark in measuring their reserves, which countries hold to help protect their economy, economies in times of trouble. By adding the renminbi to this group, the IMF effectively says that it considers the currency to be safe reliable, and freely usable. It is a recognition of the process that the Chinese authorities have made in the past years reforming China's monetary and financial systems. Christine Lagarde, the managing director of the IMF, said in a statement in Washington, the continuation of deepening and deepening of efforts will bring about a more robust international monetary and financial system, which in turn will support the growth and stability of China and the global economy. The designation is a point of pride in Beijing, which had made it one of the highest economic policy priorities. In the months before the fund's decision, China moved aggressively to expand the currency's standing on a global stage, 
building trading hubs in Europe, and developing a raft of renminbi denominated bonds and commodity contracts. In devaluating, devaluing the currency, China changed the way it set the value of the renminbi each morning, allowing market forces to play a bigger role. The IMF decision also says a lot about the waning influence of Europe. The renminbi is mainly replacing part of the euro's role in the special drawing rights. Assessing currencies for the accounting system, the fund put a greater emphasis on their different roles in international finance. The dollar still dominates in finance and trade, while the renminbi is quickly gaining ground on the euro. So you see what's happening here. There's an influx of dollars on the global stage around the world, but the Chinese are trying to take the place of that to provide liquidity for borrowing and become the world's reserve bank, like the United States has had since 1944, Bretton Woods. I'll continue with the article. The United States Treasury said it supported the IMF decision. Besides its symbolic weight, the IMF label, which will take effect at the end of September next year, carries specific benefits. The renminbi will become one of the currencies used in the disbursement and repayment of international bailouts denominated in the fund's accounting unit, like Greece's debt deal. The renminbi's new status will improve the international system and safeguard global financial stability. President Xi Jinping of China said in mid-November, while the renminbi may gain favor internationally, the IMF designation does not mean that China's economic overhaul is complete. China maintains heavily heavy regulatory control over the country's financial system. The country also falls short in legal protections, with the Communist Party continuing to play a strong role in deciding court cases. Such issues could limit the overall appeal of the renminbi and China's ambitions. It is a historic moment in the international finance for an emerging market economy with a per capita income barely a quarter that of other reserve currency economies. To be anointed as the issuer of one of the world's major reserve currencies, said Ezwar. Prasad, a former head of the IMF's China division, who is now the Tolani Senior Pre Professor of Trade Policy at Cornell University. But the most likely scenario is that the renminbi will erode, but not seriously rival the dollar's status as the dominant global reserve currency. The changing currency dynamics also create new political, geopolitical concerns. As the renminbi becomes more deeply woven into the global economy, it undermines the ability of the West to impose financial sanctions on countries accused of human rights abuses and other violations like Sudan and North Korea. Oh, and let's leave out China in the article, okay? <laughs> let's, let's pretend that, uh, you know, there's no human rights violations over there, okay? Such countries can increasingly carry out transactions in Runimbi. China contends that it is crucial to respect nations' sovereignty and that leaders should be allowed to set policy without fearing international criticism or intervention. China remains a close business and financial partner of Sudan and North Korea. Mr. Chi invited the president of Sudan to a recent 
military parade in Beijing. As the renminbi rises, countries will have more choices about where they do their banking and how to potentially circumvent sanctions, said Christopher Brummer, a Georgetown University law professor specializing in currencies. Oh, don't you mean that China would be able to manipulate its uh, currency more? <laughs> Beijing's effort to position the renminbi as a rival to the dollar traces back to the incuriously named document 217. Innocuously, excuse me, the Chinese Central Bank posted the document on its website with little fanfare in August 2010, but buried in the document's technical jargon was an important measure with global implications. Under a new rule, China would start allowing other countries, central banks, to begin buying its bonds in Shanghai. Officials in other countries just had to get permission first from the People's Bank of China. So basically what they're doing is providing more private bank loans to governments. Nigeria was paying close attention. Lamido Sanusi, I guess, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, had already been mulling whether to park part of the country's $40 billion in foreign exchange reserves in Renimbi. A prominent Islamic scholar, he was the son of an influ influential Nigerian prince who served as his country's ambassador to China during the Cultural Revolution. Back then, his father advocated a shift by Africa away from Western dominance and toward closer relations with China. When China is going to do the same thing as the United States, apparently. When Mr. San Uzi became the central bank chief in 2009, Nigeria had extensive trade ties with China. In shifting a portion of revenues, he bet correctly, as it turned out, that the renminbi would appreciate. Interest rates on renminbi denominated bonds were also several percentage points higher than yields compare on comparable treasuries. Okay, so the article is going on. Well, I think we've heard enough of this article. I'm a little bit frustrated. We're leaving out the fact that China has ghost cities in China. Uh, ghost cities with in poverty rates that are very high. They have apartment buildings that cost the equivalent of a USD $40,000 in China in empty cities and then you go over to the next city and there's all these Chinese people living in poverty that can't live in these ghost towns. Huge mile after mile ghost town cities with elaborate buildings and uh, buildings all over, condominiums, business buildings, uh, you know, city buildings that are completely empty. And we're acting like this is a stable nation. Give me a damn break. Give me a damn break. This is pathetic. The article by NewYorkTimes.com by Keith Bradshaw, November 30th, 2015. But there you have it. IMF accepting China as a reserve currency. Main reserve, main world currency. This is Neil Vanderstelt, author of Global Economic Collapse, The New Dark Ages. Thank you for listening.